Although the observable universe is unimaginably vast, even our most advanced scientific instruments can only see about 15% of what's out there. The other 85% is a true mystery. Scientists say that they know that this extra unseen matter is there. They have plenty of indirect evidence of it, but they have no idea what it actually is. They call it dark matter. And it's still unknown whether this pervasive mysterious material can form complex materials, life even, or if it's just a bunch of uninteresting elementary particles. But if there is an intelligence lurking in the dark matter, although we can't touch or see it, we still may be able to communicate with it. Before we talk about a dark matter intelligence, let's get the lay of the land first. In the 1960s and 70s, astronomers had begun mapping the galaxies and their movements. In doing so, they stumbled on what looked like a math error. The stars in the galaxies seemed to be revolving around the galactic center so fast that they should escape the gravitational pull of the galaxy's gravity and be flung out into the interstellar voids. But that wasn't happening. Galaxies seem to have much more gravitational force than they appear to. Not only that, but when looking across seemingly empty regions of space, astronomers noticed that light was bending as if subject to a large gravitational force. But there was nothing there. Enter dark matter. If you add dark matter particles, theoretical particles that only interact with gravitational force, ones that don't interact with light or other matter at all, the universe starts to make sense again. Well, at least the math does. But you need a lot of dark matter. Five times as much dark matter as regular matter, and then galaxies rotate as one would expect, and the invisible gravitational lensing has an explanation. And as it turns out, adding this extra dark matter clears up a lot of other inconsistencies with cosmological observations. From the structure of the universe to the cosmic microwave background. And there's enough of this indirect evidence for dark matter existing that scientists don't just say they believe in it, they say they know it exists. But they still don't know what it is. To find that out, they need to directly observe dark matter. But since dark matter doesn't interact with the matter that makes up you and me, the, the Earth, the Sun, literally anything we know, it's a hard challenge. But it's one scientists are up for. In the world of particle physics, things are defined by probabilities. Those probabilities can get extremely small. For example, the probability that an electron of a carbon atom being miles away from its nucleus at any given moment. It's extremely small, but not zero. With this in mind, scientists hope that dark matter particles can interact with normal matter, but only on very rare occasions. As the Earth and everything in it is constantly passing through clouds of dark matter, scientists hope that they will one day be able to spot one of these interactions. To have a chance at this, scientists need to isolate a test chamber such that anything passing through the test chamber would only be dark matter. Cosmic rays, radioactive particles, or even a minuscule amount of light leaking in would lead to false positives. So scientists build their dark matter detectors deep underground. There they place vats of liquid xenon, a large atom which produces photons when jostled. And then they wait and wait until a dark matter particle passing through Earth passes through this vat of xenon and by chance collides with an atom. But so far, nothing. However, having no physical results does not stop theoretical physicists from theorizing. Without any evidence to suggest dark matter can form dark matter molecules with complex interactions, many assume that dark matter is simply made up of largely uninteresting particles, simply relics of the Big Bang that are unable to interact with other dark matter particles or anything else, unable to do anything but move about in the gravitational fields until the end of time. Such a model of dark matter does fit what we observe. Unlike normal matter that collides with each other, 
losing momentum until they clump together, forming stars and planets. Dark matter seems to be found in clouds and halo-like structures, suggesting it does not clump together. We're able to infer this structure of the dark matter by mapping the gravitational lensing that we see. But it, it might be too soon to declare these dark matter structures uninteresting. Caltech professor Catherine Zurich believes that there may be untold complexity in the hidden world of dark matter. She introduced the concept of a hidden sector, where dark matter particles have just as much complexity as normal matter. A dark matter periodic table of elements, dark matter standard model, and so on and so on. Zurich's colleague, Professor Sean Carroll, builds on that idea, suggesting that there may be dark forces that only exist between dark matter particles within this hidden sector. And in 2017, theoretical physicists Matthew Buckley and Anthony DiFranzo explained in their paper, Collapsed Dark Matter Structures, how dark matter particles could clump together into objects like stars and planets while still forming the amorphous cloud and halo-like structures that we infer. The answer? Dark matter clumping together, such as a dark matter galaxy and its constituent objects, would need to be about a thousand times smaller than their regular matter equivalent. In other words, there could be about a thousand small dark matter galaxies within our Milky Way galaxy. Of course, this analysis makes a lot of assumptions, and it's worth pointing out that Dr. Buckley still thinks that dark matter is likely uninteresting, but that his work proves interesting possibilities are possible. But let's for a moment assume that the dark matter hidden sector is robust, complete with its own chemistry, physics, and stellar objects. Other worlds that are so alien as to be indescribable. And while any specifics of this dark matter world are by nature undefined to us, there is one possibility that remains constant throughout them all. The possibility of dark matter life evolving. Some may argue that such discussions of elaborate dark matter worlds and potential life therein doesn't matter. We can't interact with dark matter in any meaningful way, so who cares if there's dark matter life? And they, they might be right, but perhaps interactions between the dark and normal worlds are like a one-way mirror. Perhaps they can peer into our world, but we cannot perceive theirs. However, even if our limited perceptions are reciprocal, we still have a chance at communicating across the realms. In fact, we've just recently developed the technology that would enable us to hear a message from an advanced dark matter life form should they exist and wish to communicate. The method? The one force that links the dark matter world to ours. Gravity. Just as you can encode a signal or message into an electromagnetic wave, you can similarly encode information into a gravity wave. And in 2016, we created our first gravity wave receiver. It's not tuned for alien messages, Instead, it's listening for the waves produced as black holes and neutron stars orbit each other until they eventually collide. Still, it would also hear artificial signals in its hearing range, and there's multiple new tools being worked on to expand that range. And while our first gravity wave detector LIGO was an enormous feat of engineering, the hard part of gravity wave communication is transmitting. The gravity waves we've been able to receive have been from black holes around 30 times as massive as our sun rotating around each other. Saying it would take a lot of energy to artificially create a signal on that magnitude is the understatement of the year. But something like that might not be out of the realm of possibilities for a sufficiently advanced intelligence. And physics as we know it wouldn't even apply to a dark matter intelligence. Even today, there's speculation about our civilization being able to create gravity waves with much less energy than meets the eye. So while we continue to develop our sense of gravitational hearing, should we notice a signal coming from the dark void? We should pay attention. It could drastically change what we think of the dark spaces in between. And you can be sure I'll be paying attention. And if I get wind of a message from the void, 
Or news that the xenon pools in the dark matter test chambers lit up? I'll be sure to let you all know here. So be sure to subscribe for more on this and other un- and underknown stories. I'm Rather Be Squiddy. Thanks for watching.